Mary is the Executive Director of IDA Ireland. She has the responsibility for the implementation of IDA Ireland's corporate strategy, winning FDI 2015 to 2019, and she has held senior leadership positions in Ireland, North America over the past 11 years. Mary, you've been the Divisional Manager covering regional development property and corporate op operations and she's been the vice president and the director of the North America IDA, um, IDA section. So with that I'm going to call Mary and good luck Mary. I'm not sure how you're going to manage your, your slides. Fine, fine. Yes. <laughs> Thank you Minister. Thank you. Good evening everybody and uh, thank you very much for inviting me here tonight, Minister. I'm delighted to have the opportunity uh, to meet with everybody and to give you an update from an IDA perspective on, on, on Brexit. Um, one of the things that I found this evening obviously is that uh, Kevin and myself, Enterprise Ireland and IDA report into the Department of Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation. So there may be a little bit of overlap in some of the things we say, um, but it's all it's all good, um, consistent, positive stuff. So I think uh, that you'll uh, get a good feel for what's going on and the kind of work that has been taking place since June of last year. Um, just to say, IDA's remit is to attract overseas companies to Ireland, and once they're here, it's to work with them uh, to to grow and expand their activities here. And um, Notwithstanding the uh, Brexit decision last year, plus um, the US elections in November, as the Minister has already said, IDA had its best year uh, in its history, and it's almost 70 year history we had our best year. And we brought, in, in that year, IDA client companies brought employment up to about 200,000 people. And uh, we saw a net increase in employment of over 11,000 uh, people which was a 7% increase uh, on the previous year. There were 244 investments won from all over the globe last year, of which about 99 of them were new companies investing for the first time in Ireland. Um, we have a strong focus on attracting investment to regional locations, and we saw success there last year. But also we have in Dublin over 700 companies uh, that are IDA supported companies and they employ just over 83,000 people. Um, the impact of foreign direct investment in Ireland cannot be underestimated. Um, IDA clients export about 149 billion in 2015, and they generate about 10 billion euro in payroll into the economy on, a, on an annual basis. Um, they obviously have a very heavy spend on Irish services and on Irish materials. And in 2015, they spent 5.5 billion euro on capital investments. So you can see the knock-on and spin-off of overseas companies in Ireland. So in June 2016, um, the surprise uh, outcome was something that both Ireland and IDA did not want to see happen. Uh, the referendum decided that the UK would leave the EU. And uh, that was obviously a very disappointing outcome, but we had to factor that in over the six to nine months prior to the referendum. So we had our plans in place. So immediately on the announcement in June that uh, uh, the UK was going to be exiting the EU, we wrote to all our client companies um, and we offered them our assistance and our support. But we also reinforced to them the importance of Ireland um, its commitment to the EU, our strong um, base of existing companies, our pro-business policies, the fact that we are English speaking, and a number of other areas as well that are very important for overseas companies when they make decisions on where to locate. Um, when we did that, we were obviously uh, very clear that from the outset we needed to fight to win any investments that were going to be won uh, by Brexit um, and by the decisions that were being made. Those decisions were not just decisions that were going to be made in the, in the UK by companies that are already in existence there, but those decisions are made in the US by US companies that have operations in the UK, and decisions are also made in, in Asia and other locations. Not just, as I said, for companies that have operations in the UK, 
but companies may also have been considering establishing an operation in the UK. So we were targeting a, a number of different types of companies, and that's a very, very big part of what we've been doing for the last year. Um, so what we did uh, since then is we've been very actively engaged with our companies in the UK and in all those other territories, working with them as they do their due diligence to decide what it is they're going to do on the back of Brexit. Suffice to say that many of them were not expecting the outcome, uh, so they weren't really that well prepared. So they have been doing a huge amount of work in the last uh, uh, nine months, deciding what it is they will do on, on the back of Brexit. We have been working very closely with many of those companies in that regard. Internally, we have obviously had to do a huge amount of work ourselves on rebranding, on refocusing, um, and highlighting the advantages of Ireland uh, from a Brexit perspective. And uh, again, getting that message out to, to most of our clients. In the last uh, nine months, we've had over 100 queries from clients um, inquiring about Ireland as a location on the back of Brexit. Um, those inquiries have also turned into site visits where companies come and look at Ireland as a location. And that's a key piece of the due diligence process where companies look to analyse to see what's going on and to get an impression of the country. And that in particular applies to companies that don't have a presence, but also to companies that have a presence in Ireland, and they may be saying, right, are we going to expand here, or are we going to do it in many of our other sister our operations around the globe? So from an IDA perspective, when it comes to winning investments, we are constantly being compared with other locations. So where are the opportunities? In the short term, and I think it's the one that you probably hear most about, is the opportunities in financial services. Because many of the UK, uh, many of the companies that are based in the UK are looking at opportunities uh, that uh, may exist in other locations, particularly locations that have the EU regulations that they require in order to do their business. So that is very important for them. We also see opportunities in the short term in the area of technology and in content and in the area of uh, digital media and digital activities and in the whole area of life sciences, particularly in pharmaceuticals, in the services end of pharmaceuticals. In the more medium term, then, it is on the, on the manufacturing side that we see the opportunities from pharmaceutical manufacturing, biopharmaceutical, medtech, and of course, a key uh, sector for us is engineering. The analysis that we've done and all the work that's been taking place um, within IDA and the engagement with the clients, all of that is fed back um, through the government agencies and the, the groups that they have established. In fact, um, two of them are under the Minister's remit in DJI. One of the, of the groups is the Brexit Coordination Group and the other group is the Enterprise Forum on Brexit and Global Challenges. And uh, we actually had that meeting this afternoon, so many of us were involved in that, uh, that uh, session this afternoon in the Department of uh, Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation. And there is also a group of Department of Finance on financial services. All those groups working together um, then feed all of that back into uh, the Taoiseach's department who have a very strong coordinating role in all of this. Yeah, they have, okay, the previous one actually. Um, so um, from the perspective of uh, IDA, one of the areas that we uh, have to have a very strong focus on is marketing Ireland and marketing Ireland as a location for FDI. And as I said, that's happening right over the, all over the globe. So we've had to invest a huge amount of, uh, of our, our time and efforts in traveling and the, the globe to meet with our client companies. But in tandem with that, we've had a huge focus uh, on meeting the, the media globally to inform them on what we're doing from an FDI perspective on the strengths of Ireland and the great companies that are already here successfully operating. Those engagements and interactions would have happened with our CEO who's been involved in many of the uh, uh, media engagements but also our, our minister and um, has travelled right across uh, Asia, Europe and the US um, imparting to clients and potential clients um, the location of Ireland and what we have to offer. Uh, that's been a key part of our, of our focus in the last uh, number of months. Uh, the very strong focus that we have is around the area, obviously, on Ireland being 
uh, a committed member of the EU. Uh, for some companies, they weren't sure where Ireland stood. 